Hi, this is Pete Lyons with another Let's Play Salesforce video, and today we're going to talk about basic bindings uh, and groupings in Einstein Analytics. So I'm logged in my Trailhead org, and today I would want to have a bar chart that I can toggle what it's grouped by. So first, I need to get a bar chart. So I'm going to go to my DTC Opportunity data set, and I'm going to group it. Um, why am I grouping it? Because I need something to pass my dynamic value into. So I'm going to group by account type. Go ahead and get that on the screen. Uh, next, <clears throat> I need a static step that's going to contain the different columns that I want to be able to group by. So I'm going to go to Create Step, and I'm going to select Create a Static Step with Custom Values. This is effectively going to create a mini data set. It's going to have two columns. One is Display, one is Value. Uh, we can add additional columns, uh, but you do have to do that manually through the JSON editor. Uh, you must always have at least one column named display, as this is what's going to show up on the button. So now we need to name it. We're going to add a value for type. We're going to pass in the API name of account type. Then we're going to have one for segment. And that's really just the minimum necessary. Now before we can bind to it, it's really important that we get it on the screen. And why is that? Because if I don't have it there where I can click on it, nothing's selected. Notice that both of these um, are in white right now. Uh, that's because we don't have a selection, and so this is going to pass nothing to the chart, and the chart's going to error out. So we also want to go to the step properties, and we want to change the selection type to single selection required. We'll notice that the type uh, button has gone dark. So now let's take a look at our code. So this is our static step right here. And there's some metadata at the bottom, but the part that we're really concerned with is the values section. And we see that there are two values in there. One has type and account type, and one has display of segment and segment. Each one of these little entries is a row. So if I wanted to add a third row to this, I would copy it, paste it. And for this one, I want it to be labeled as vertical, but the field I want it to give me is industry. We hit done. Now we see that our toggle has type, segment, and vertical, which is industry. So this still doesn't do anything yet because we haven't bound it to the chart. So let's do that. Control E, back into the code editor. Let's look at the step account type, which is the one that's powering that chart. The query only goes from lines 27 to 39. But the step itself actually has a lot of visualization parameters that has to do with like all the chart settings and stuff. You can bind to a lot of this. You can configure a lot of this from the UI. But it's kind of more than we're going to be concerned with today. We really only care about the query up at the top. So what does our query have? It has a uh, measures section, and it has a grouping section. So our grouping account type, that's what it's currently grouped by. We're going to need to replace this with a binding. Every binding is enclosed in a double set of curlies. It starts with, uh, I forget what this is called. I think it's like input function or something. Uh, basically, column, row, or cell. And it tells you, hey, when you go to that other step, this is the part of the step I want you to, re to, to return. So we're going to pick column. Next, that's a function. So it's going to take two parameters. First parameter is going to be the name of the step we want to pull from which is my static underscore one. And we want to tell it if it's going, if this is a selection or results binding, that's going to say, go and give me the one that is currently picked, or go and give me the total of all that is picked. Um, that's the basic distinction. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much depth. So dot selection. Our second argument is going to be, which columns do you want? Now, we only want one column, but you can have multiple, so this is why it needs to be passed in as an array, because an array is a list of things. 
And uh, what do we need to give it a list of? We need to give it a list of columns, which are going to be as strings, so they need to be in quotes. Now you'll notice the little error checkbox. That's because the JSON thinks, oh, you said a quote? Am I supposed to do something? No, 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 no. We just mean quotes as in we're talking about a field name, so like air quotes. So to do that, we need escape characters. These are your air quotes. Uh, and we need to tell it the name of the column that we want to pull. And then lastly, we need to give it a data serialization function. This is going to dictate the shape in which it returns our data. Uh, that's a really simple way to describe a very complex thing that we're not getting into in this video. So real quick, let's uh, check this over. We got uh, double curly, column, open parentheses, my static, uh, my static underscore one dot selection, comma, array, escape quote, value, escape quote, close array, close parentheses, dot as object. What does that actually mean? Go and get, you know, first the double curlies, it's a binding. It means go and get the selection in the value column of my static one and return it as an object. That's what that means. Go get the value column, uh, go get the current selection in the value column of my static one and return it as an object. It's a little hard to get used to the syntax. There's lots of great examples online. Copy and paste your way to success, and you'll just get better over time. Um, hit done, and let's see if it works. Would you look at that? So if you enjoyed this video, uh, please like, uh, subscribe, share, tell a friend. Um, make suggestions. Tell me what kind of videos you want to see. And as always, thank you for watching.